guys good morning and um, good day to you in whatever country and wherever you are um, yes I will be giving a quick breakdown of this design so I hope you guys understand um, the approach and the the knowledge to it do you understand it's not as complex as it looks like it's just simple simple things here and there and basically the fun thing about about photoshop is just the ability for you to find that sweet blending spot that's basically it so that way maybe you actually have all these multiple layers come up as a whole it's just like cooking design is basically just like cooking right your ability to put salt maggi pepper onions water and all the necessary ingredients in the right quantity and not over put it do you understand it's just the way design is do you understand? it's just a cook up of so many different layers so some in, in some soup or in some food you know there must be more oil in some food there must be less oil there must be more pepper there must be less pepper depending on preference and who you are cooking for and all of that so many things to it do you understand so but it's just for you to now know okay who is this meant for who who am i designing for and who are those that will need this kind of design and all of that and all of this has i'm sure has been explained in the audio class for day one right where we talk about design principles and how and where to apply these principles yeah so that basically what serves as a guide to your style of design or your type of design and i'm sure i explained when we talked about um, font usage and all of that how i would be able to um, apply all of that you get so it's really quite simple and all of that so just for you to know the context in which you're designing for so designing um, all of this i have this bunch of layers here and um, it's really not as complex as it should look I love that the layers are quite few all right compared to my normal sports poster kind of layers it's quite few but that notwithstanding it's still quite something so i would turn off all these layers and turn them back on it let me just delete some of these layers that are not going to be needed if i turn them off so i'm sure you guys have um, your your files with you so you know as I'm doing you can also um, look at it and um, find what works for you all right so yeah that's that's about that so I'll be turning off all the layers so that we can see how this whole thing works So I'll turn them off. First off, if you're asking how to create adboards, you come to new document, right? So under new document, um, this is what you're doing a calibration. I'm working with pixels, right? So I have 3000 by 3750, and I'm working like this because of the spec of my system. My system is 16 gig RAM system called i7, so it's able to process fast with this resolution, right? So, but if your system is is not within this spec you can use like a lower resolution let's say like 2000 or um, um say one five to whatever ratio it would be because this ratio of 3000 to 3750 is the ratio for 1080 to um 1350 that is instagram that's instagram certified portrait size right so that's why it's like this so my system can run on this without giving me hiccups all right so the orientation is definitely um, portrait not landscape then if you're wondering how i create multiple artboards it's because this artboards layer is checked all right the resolution i'm using 118.11 this is like default i don't know i don't bother changing this so but if i'm designing for screen i use anything from 75 um, pixels per centimeter to 150 pixels per centimeter right it's fine but if i'm doing for print i can use one from 150 to um, 
300 pixels per centimeter there about so that you know it's quite sharp and it doesn't pixelate like that then rgb color because i'm designing for screen all right if i'm designing for print out i'll use cmyk all right then um all of this remains constant and i okay it so once you okay it like this brings up the stuff so how am i able to duplicate artboards at the end of i can create multiple artboards in two ways first off if i want to um duplicate oh why is this stuff still repeating um okay let's wait a while okay so let me come back here first off if i want to duplicate um an artboard i can just come over and click at the edge then press ctrl j it will duplicate all right or command j to duplicate that's the command for anything um, duplicate on photoshop ctrl j all right but if i just want to add a new artboard and not a duplicate of this i will just come to any of the sites and once i click on that it creates a whole new artboard right i think my system is quite loaded that's why it's actually processing slower all right so back to that so that's basically how i make um artboards are duplicates so duplicates is just once i'm done with one designing on one artboard then i just um, either i do what i just showed you or i come and click on the artboard um, um, thingy itself then ctrl j or command j then to duplicate this to give me this you see this is a copy of this original one so first i started with the the stadium Right, this is what I started with. Started with stadium. This is what the stadium looks like. I downloaded this stadium of um, I don't know the site I downloaded the stadium of, but if you go to pixels, if you go to unsplash, you see um, pictures of um, stadiums you can actually download. Right, so uh, this is actually the way the picture came. In. I liked it like this because it was it giving the red vibe. The red and the black vibe already so i like it like this then i introduced the picture circus picture so if you're asking this is not the way the picture was all right this is not the way the picture was the picture came in in very very low resolution so if you want to know how i edit my pictures i have a video my i have a video on youtube i will suggest you go and look up that video and know how i actually edit you know, my pictures so that's i edited the picture to get to this point this is not how the picture was but i needed to get to this point i needed it rough because it's a sports poster so that so it should be rough i, I could have smoothened out these places and all of that but i need you know sports poster used to, basically has actions so once there's so much action and all of that it's good for it to look rough and all of that so it gives that feel do you understand so that's how i manipulated my i did all of this with camera roll this is what camera roll looks this is where camera roll is it's on a filter camera roll i have a video on youtube so check that out all right then um i downloaded on that picture of him so right, this is a second picture of him i don't know his picture of footy renders f w o t y renders all right and i intend to get to this point with camera row two all right on that camera row in my in my color mixer on that camera row in my color mixer um, hopefully my system doesn't hang ew, 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 ew. okay so let me look at it you guys just look up my video on on camera row filter you find that's the, uh, it does hang. So we need to restart this. So you guys might give me a bit. I will need to restart this. My system is really full. I will need to to free up space. So yes, you might definitely get to a point like this where your system gets to fail or but that is that is not the standard. That is not a problem. We always find the fix with it. So whether it is using the paid version or using the free version, this 
type of thing will always happen. Right? It will always happen. See, I'm using a paid version of um, Photoshop. Right, and it's really quite expensive, but what can we do? I think I pay about 21, I think 20, I think 21 to 25 pounds every month. That's quite a lot for the whole Adobe suit though. So, not just Photoshop, but Photoshop, Illustrator, um, InDesign, and the likes. Alright, so, I have access to the whole... Adobe Suite, but it's a monthly subscription, and I I couldn't afford to pay for a full year. Right, so it's a monthly subscription, so that's why most times I charge the way I charge because of um, how much goes into what I do. Right, so it's really not that easy, but. Right, you get a hang of it, and I would advise as you get better, as you go bigger, try to set out a budget for your personal spending on your software to actually help your life. I think that's one of the biggest advice I'll give you guys because the thing about um, uh, the thing about it is that when you keep on because this software is someone else's software, but you're using it for free. You understand there's that point where you get to use it for free but where you now stay and you don't want to you don't want to really get to that point where you're actually paying for all of this stuff you understand and you're comfortable using it for free then there would actually be a problem right there would actually be a problem because it doesn't it doesn't stop no, no part of using is a free software supports growth no matter how good you get to be in the future and all of that, they still come back for you. Because their height you will not be able to get to and there are things you will not be able to have access to. That's because you're using a cracked software. You try as much as possible to um, uh, make sure you set out a project that would help you cover all of this. Or have it in mind, right? You grow into it. That's just the funny thing about it. You grow into it. I was using cracked software before but you know, God has helped somebody right, so aspire to get to that point where you can afford it without you know, beating anybody so yes back to here this we have this picture here so I I added layer mask here to clean off this stuff so should in case for those newbies should in case you want to clean off something I want to if I turn off this thing if I disable this this is the full picture, but I didn't want this part of him to show. Alright. I didn't need that part because I was going to put some things here. So I cleaned it out. How did I clean it out? I came just click over what you want to add a max to. Alright, then come here to layer mask. Then once you click on layer mask, it automatically adds a white layer. Then you Take your brush, take your brush to make sure your brush is set to soft round brush. Right, then bring the flow down to 10%. Take the flow down to 10%. This is the level is still okay. Right, then make sure your caps lock is turned off. As your caps lock is not turned off, you just be seeing. Just see the way the brush is now. This way is not meant to be. If you want to increase the brush, you use your 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 brackets, your um, corner brackets, whatever. I don't know what that thing is called to increase. Then use the other one to reduce. All right. So if your caps lock is on, this is what you'll be seeing. You'll be seeing this. You'll not be able to know the size of the brush you're using. But if you don't have your caps lock, you'll not be able to see the size of the brush you're using. Right, so it's better that way. Then you come to your brush and you make sure since it is a white um, mask you're seeing here to paint out, you use what a black. So you turn your background to white and turn your foreground to what black over here at this point. Right here, my mouse is then you paint over this. Right, if you notice, I see it's painting over it. 
and it's fading okay right so we have that thing then the next thing i did i added the curves adjustment layer all right to make it darker all right i did the curves adjustment where did i get curves adjustment layer i came here then you see curves all right curves basic curves basically work with lights basically works with works with lights to give the lighting of a place or backing up a place so this is what is on my curves adjustment layer you have that on your own so this is like a general i can decide to to um what do you call it everything in photoshop basically works like color grading from left from left to right so from left you have the background on the right you have the highlight all right so basically why this curve is like this is because i'm trying to reduce the highlight i'm trying to reduce the brightness that's why i'm on this right side if i come to this left side now all right i'm increasing i'm increasing the whiteness all right but here i'm reducing what whiteness all right so that's basically what it is so that's what I did with that cover adjustment. I wanted it to be darker because it was it was looking too bright, so I wanted it to be darker because of what I wanted to achieve. Then I think I added another cause adjustment layer to darken out these parts. Alright. To darken out the right parts and some of these other parts. So when I added the cause adjustment layer, right, this is what it was. But so I need I didn't need it on these pictures. So what I do, I got my brush. Alright, so over this curve adjustment layer, I just came here and added the marks. That's what you have here. So I took my brush and make sure I make sure my foreground is set to black and my background is set to white. So I now painted over this curve adjustment layer till this place was bright enough. Let's see, I got darkness. If you notice now, I see. Right, that is that is the power of masking. Right. So after that, I added um, a rectangle in the middle. All right, and if you notice, I changed the blending mode of the rectangle. All right, the blend mode of the rectangle is dark color. And the opacity is 100 percent because this dark color was giving me something very very artistic so basically there is no there's no calculation to it to say okay this is what i'm going to use and all of that and all of that it's only a very very specific um occasions maybe when you have when you want to add light to something and the rest like i now know that okay you're going for screen lighting or color touch or whatever but everything aside is that when using your blending mode be open-minded to experiment the blending mode is not much you just have about say um, okay this is two this is five ten fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty 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 four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty twenty nine thirty thirty one so you just have thirty one blend modes you can just try make sure you you try all of them to actually see what works do you understand so it's a trial and error something it's not like no it's you got it figured out now. Trying and error something. So the next thing I did was to add uh, these rectangles here. So what did I do? Uh, these are the rect. Let me start from the beginning. Or the beginning. So I added this first rectangle. Then I added another one on top of it. All right to so give me somewhat something darker. I think the blend mode is hard light. The blend mode of this one too is hard light. Right? Then I added a a noise. A noise um I added the under rectangle. Then I added noise to the rectangle. How do you add noise to the rectangle? You come to filter or you, well, how do you add noise over anything? You come to filter, then you come to noise, then you come to add noise. Alright, so under add noise, you now determine the amount of noise you want to add. Alright, so then I change the blend mode to hard light. I try to blend with this other two under here. Then I added this um, 
um, other one below here is a rectangle too but i used the um, i used the distort tool so over this rectangle all right i just clicked on ctrl t let's click on ctrl t it brings up ctrl t then okay sorry once you click on ctrl t it transforms the image then you right click then you see distort so once you see other distorts you now be able to adjust all right be able to adjust any point as you please that's how i got that right so i got this basically from this all right so i now added another copy i duplicated this again all right mind you the the blend mood of all these rectangles is what add light add light all of them so over these rectangles i now said okay let me add something to actually pass it up so i added a gold a gold layer right so now this gold layer now this is the more this is the blend mode is multiply but in its normal form this is what it looks like okay is a gold texture background it's a gold texture background all right so um my system is loading don't know what is loading for mm. so basically as i as i was saying um, my system is loading um design is basically just trial and error trial and error till you actually get it right right this design took me about two hours to complete and all of that so maybe kind two hours of trial and error to see what actually works and what doesn't work right so you have this um, particular uh, stuff so what i did i maxed this um, texture over just this rectangle so what i do i grouped all the rectangles together right i grouped all of them together so this way you have them in group one then i came on this um, 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 texture i right clicked all right I right clicked and you find create clipping mask so now i've already created clipping max that's why it's natural so if i release this clipping max all right it's also you find out it to affect this picture because it is over this picture all right but i just put it over this rectangle that is below it so i'll just come and click right click and you see create clipping mask so once you click on that create clipping mask it just now applies on whatever that is directly below it right so i now added um, a noise layer texture to this one down the same thing i added noise layer i added the way i added noise noise layer to this i also now duplicated this and added the noise layer the same thing pretty much easy then i now added this remember the studio that was behind i now added it back in front again but this time i did some things right i changed the blending mode to pin light Right, so that it's able to come out on this rectangle here. Pin line to pin light. Then I cleaned it off of their faces. If you notice, you see a mask here. I maxed it off these faces. If I disable this mask, this is what it looks like. Over their faces, but this is not what I want. So I cleaned it with my brush tool and all of that. And then it's it's now looking nice and something you know very very cool then i added the text all right bukayo saka i really like this guy so the text i added is gal gaudagli right so you guys have the psd so i'm sure you guys are following well then i added arsenal forward it has a different text and downy for those asking how many texts can we put in a particular design if you want to use one million text, it's nobody's business, provided they all serve a purpose and they blend well with each other. All right, so that's down here. Then the next thing I added was a shape. So this I have this shape in a PSD format. All right, I have like a bunch of them PSD formats. So I just imported one of them here. Then and what else again? Yeah, his name. That's this name. I now duplicated it. And use my distort tool 
you read the same way I made this rectangle here that looks like the floor it's the same way I made this text alright so I first converted this text I rasterized the text first of all then I now transformed it Control T right click then use this thoughts right so once I just took this thought I just uh, uh, walked around with this edge the bottom left and I'll spread it this way and also spread it this way so it's now give you something like this very very nice stuff all right then um, what else did I add next okay I now added this is picture right so I found this picture online then I added this picture I edited it on camera roll all right I added I edited it on camera with camera roll to get to this point so I increased the reds so it's his lip is always red, so, so I didn't have time to clean this red off, all right? So I adjusted the red to make sure the red is popping, all right? So these are my camera raw filter settings. So if you have the um, the PSD, you'll be able to see my camera raw settings. That's one of the reasons why it's good to convert your images or objects to smart objects, or so that when you are, when you apply the um, camera effect or whatever effect you apply on it you can be able to make some very very sudden changes so if you look at this camera you can study it on your own right so you have that as is picture one then I now added um, shadows to the ball if you look this is it is I added that ellipse right? that's what you call all these shadows that's the way, basically the way to add shadows so you come over to this point, you look for the ellipse to then you draw. Make sure it's black. Alright. Then you come to filter, then you come to blow, come to brush and blow. So rest of the layer. I advise you to make sure it's convert to smart um, it is a smart object, not raster object. So that you're able to edit whenever or how. So you're saying this is what it looks like. So here it's okay for me. Then mind you, I don't used to give I don't used to like people copying my calibrations because your own case might be different. So I can now reduce the opacity here myself exactly to where I want it. So like this is actually okay, I'm not bad. That's how I got to actualize this. Once you're done, you just to place it behind the object. Right, so that's basically the simplest way to add shadows then I now added another one I think to his leg yes All right, then this last one okay this last one is because of the object that was going to be here so now the next thing I have is another of his picture All right so this is another same of this same picture I duplicated it but now this picture is a black out is black and white so why did I do it like this? This is because I wanted only his face and his body to be in black and white. Only his, all these places that I exposed, but his jersey, I wanted his jersey to come out the way it was. Alright, so I duplicated this again into this, but this time I turned off the words, the white and black. See this white and this is the white and black fit camera that I said. So I it off so what I did is over this one all right I created a mask over the one on top I created a mask and I painted the normal way I painted so this the one on this one on top here now is the colored one this one below is the black and white one so on this colored one all right I just painted out the head because I needed the head to be black and white and what is there once you have paint over this it start showing me this on that so I now have this head as black and white since hand and black I was meticulous about it I had to zoom in to paint it well his hand and this part of his leg that is exposing this is not how black is meant to be this is not how on the normal is meant to be but for the for the purpose of what I want to achieve I need his face his hands and his legs black and white then other part of his body or his clothes can retain their colors 
Uh, so try as much as possible when you do this to zoom in and make sure your brush is set in such a way that you can agree to accomplish that. So the next thing I added is another rectangle. I don't know where this rectangle is added to. Okay, yes, this rectangle here. Alright, so it's more like my new signature. Alright, a cross. Alright, so I added added it again. Um, okay, now I now added this picture. I found this picture on Google, so it was not that good, but I had to manage. So I did it the same way I've been editing others. Then I duplicated it again, right? The same thing I did here, the same concept I did here, the same concept I'm using here, all right? Then I added um, this, um, I got this from Wikipedia like a small bio so i didn't want this place to be outrightly empty right i wanted i wanted a balance in this place because i had this here so i wanted something to actually balance and cut that right so i said let me add a text here and it came out fine all right then the next thing i added was a rectangle um please walk over and stop hanging over. I'm sorry my system is really hanging at the moment. Like I don't know what is actually processing. Although this this particular project is actually heavy. See 1.25 gig. It's actually heavy. I won't lie. So I added these rectangles again to this bottom place. That's these two rectangles that look like cross. Right, it's just for aesthetics, not really that no. I can do it, I could have done without it. Right then, the next thing that was added was this Arsenal logo. I can get this Arsenal logo on pngwings.com. Then um, I added a half tone. Right, this is a half tone. All right, this is a, a half tone value. Let me turn it off and on so that you actually see. So it is this thing you are seeing here. That is actually a half tone. But I'm using a blend. I'm using a different blend. I'm using overlay as the blend mode, right? so you can have different blend modes to work with. Right? This is what it looks like normally, right? But I don't like this. It. It's causing so much distraction, so I have to change it to overlay. So you are seeing it there, but it's not the same. Do you understand? So this blending mode is more like the biggest cheat in Photoshop. It just it helps you maneuver and manipulate so many things to give you some different things. so you see how that has come out you see the effect on his face a little bit but it's not just so much so pronounced that it's distracting so the next thing i do of, of my overall design is to add a um, noise so this noise helps to make my design come out sharper and all of that so how do i add this noise i'll come down here to solid color so on my under my solid color i can now choose black or dark anything dark or black work then i'll okay it then i'll come here to filter come here to noise remember the way i did it before and i'll click on add noise to my particular requests or to my particular satisfaction so that's why well, that's how i have this black stuff here all right so I changed the blending mode to color dodge because that was what was working for me. Then my logo, then the vibrance, a little vibrance to make everything pop. Right, so this that is that about this. As simple as that, very, very simple stuff. So this next one is just a duplicate of this. So basically, what I just changed, or some things I changed in the second one, is just this rectangle. Right, this rectangle now I changed the blending mode to I made it darker and I changed the blending mode to darker color. Right, this is a different color from this red here. So this red and this red are not the same thing. So this is a darker, a darker red, almost wine. I don't even know, I think wine, yes. Then the blending mode is this. Then every other thing is the same. Every other thing is the same. Okay, then I think I changed the blend mode of these rectangles. So 
they are now overlay instead of hard lights they are now overlay 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 right, so they are all now overlay then the same masking of this one on top of all of them and all of that but now this one they blend with this overlay too so the name Bukayo Saka has now forward the shape then um, your your pictures you now start coming in as I added my pictures All right so the same the same thing I did in the previous one I'm not actually doing anything again in this new one because it's just a duplicate I'm just basically changing one or two one or two things which I just explained that I changed this color and blend with the the blend of this one behind so that's basically that's how I achieve my multiple artboards because they all look alike you just very very minute changes either in color grading or whatever just very very minute changes right? but i didn't color grade on this one i would being because of the tutorial class i'll definitely get to um, have one of these designs where i do separate color gradings on those different designs but this one didn't need that kind of color grading because it's just basically red and black right so there's basically nothing much nothing much i know these things back my logo then vibrance i love adding vibrance at the end at the top of my design because it helps to give this by design the desired pop i like it to add so once you click on this vibrance you just carry your vibrance to the top but don't overdo it once you overdo it your video will be looking to to you know when plantain is overdone and it's looking very very mega 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 that is what it will in turn look like it will make your design look very very somehow and wayward so guys that is basically the breakdown of this design and all that short simple good to go and sweet um i will not say it's 100 percent minimalist but it's very, very minimalist for a sports poster design so thank you guys for your time and i really appreciate sorry it's actually coming late but thank you much appreciate it. bye